I'm considered one of the best Minecraft PvPer on mobile. And so I wondered, would a mobile PvP pro be good at survival? Well, today I'm answering this question by surviving 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore on mobile. So on day zero, it all started like a normal survival world and I mined some wood. Sank, I actually spawned in a desert, meaning I had no wood. So I walked around and ended up finding a desert temple in which I found a few resources. Alright, while I'm running to find more resources, let me tell you the objectives for these 100 days. I want to kill the Ender Dragon and the Wither and have a full set of maxed out Netherite armor and tools. Cause you know, I'm not gonna spend 100 days AFK. I found a village which I ransacked cause I was hungry. I also ended up finding some wood shortly after. So I got my first log and wait, is that another desert temple I see? Yup, so I mined some stone, made the basic tool and I looted this temple like if I was a speedrunner. I didn't get anything good, but at least this was a good shelter to sleep in. Despite the fact that it's soaking wet. And we're on day one now. Yes, I know it's weird, but the day counter started on zero, okay? It's not my fault. I found another village, and that's right, I ransacked it again. There was also a buried nether portal in which I found a golden apple and some iron nuggies. There was also a pillager outpost, but I didn't really want to go in it. I don't want to die. I then went back to the other village, made the shell using the iron I got, and I also left some loot in the chest, which I actually completely forgot about, but that's beside the point. Day 2, I went cruising to find a better terrain where I could live. I don't really like the sand. I ended up finding another desert temple and got 2 golden apples and 5 iron. I also got some iron nuggets in this ruined portal. After exploring a little more, I found a mangrove forest, but I don't really want to live here either, cause it's muddy. I also found a weird mountain biome and there was a ton of iron. That's really awesome because that means I won't have to risk walking around butt naked in the caves. So I just mined the iron until day 5. So on day 5 I ended up with full iron armor and 49 spare iron ingots. I also found another desert temple in which I found my first 3 diamonds. Yet I feel like I won't have to ever go mining in this world. I then continued exploring in the ocean for like 1000 blocks without finding any land. Day 6, I found a shipwreck and watched me struggle for like 5 minutes trying to get the chest in it. I then proceeded to look for the buried treasure and oh my god this gave me a heart attack. In the treasure I found another diamond and two of the same music discs. At the end of day 6, I finally found land and on day 7, I decided I was gonna make this my home. I also did the terrible decision to use multiple types of wood, which is just so what? ugly dude, why did I do this? And so on day 9, I slept in my new house. Day 10, I stored the items in my chest. Day 11, I decided to go mining because I'm gonna need more diamonds if I want to make a full set, you know. I actually found a huge cave and there was so many monsters. Day 12, I found a deep dark biome. So I tried the strategy of breaking the skull because diamonds are more likely to spawn if it's not next to air. And it didn't work at all. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. I also almost died because of this zombie. Day 13, I decided to get out of the cave after getting a whopping zero diamonds. But I made a friend at the surface, so that makes up for it. I put my gatherings in my chest and I changed my floor to smooth diorite. If I moved here, it's because I don't like the sand, so it's time to get rid of this. Day 14, I made a diamond pickaxe and I realized my doggo didn't follow me home. So I traced back my steps and he was just swimming in the river. I have no clue why he didn't teleport to me. I then walked hundreds of blocks to find a new cave and the first one I found had a mine shaft which is really cool and I got two diamonds in one of the chests. Day 15, I mined some obsidian and I found a diamond, even more diamonds, diamonds, almost died to this creeper. I swear there shouldn't be this many mobs in this cave. Diamond, Diamantes, Diamondo. Day 16, oh my god, it's a notch up here. Also, I almost died. Okay, now I feel like you're getting bored, so here I am at the surface now, where I almost died again. This Trident dealt 6 hearts, what the hell? Now, I came back home with 32 diamonds, which is pretty cool. Also made a nether portal. Day 19, I kidnapped these cows and I made them have babies. 
day 20, it turns out there was a village on top of the mountain near my house, so I also kidnapped one of the villagers. Day 21, I started building a villager trading hall, and I think you realize by now that I suck at building. For the rest of the day, I just struggled to put this guy in a corner. Once I finally did it, it was already day 22. On that day, I decided to kidnap another villager. Day 23, I turned one of the villagers into a Fletcher, did some different station, and traded sticks with him. Can any of you count the amount of war crimes I did in this video? I turned this other dude into a librarian, got some books, and made an enchanting table, or enchantment table, whatever you prefer, man. I also used my diamonds to make a full set of diamond armor and a sword, on which I put level 1 enchants. And I am now on full enchanted diamond armor. Day 25, I realized there was a bit too many cows, so on day 27, I slaughtered some of them. Plus one on the crimes, probably. The number of villagers also started multiplying, and the kid just started running away from the trading hall. Also, there are so many cows, it's almost as now as the voices in my head. Anyways, at night, I just did some deforestation again. Day 28, got some cows, got some sugarcane, made books, turned them into bookshelves, until I finally had a level 30 enchanting table. Day 29, can we appreciate how bad these enchants are? Like, hello? I gave food to the villagers, got out, and what the hell happened to you, my boy? You were a kid like two seconds ago. So I turned him into a librarian and broke and replaced the lectern like a million times until I got mending. Day 30, I decided to go into the nether and immediately started dying. Hello sir, Uno reverse card. I mined some quads to get levels, like a lot of quads. Once I got level 30, I got prod 4 on my chest plate. Day 31, I stumbled upon a bastion which had nether walls, and I want to get that to get potions, you know. So I jumped in, got what I wanted, and ran away because I know these brutes do a lot of damage. I also went mining that day, I have no clue why, so... Mining montage. Day 32, I came back home with quite a lot of basic resources. Day 33, time to kill some cows again, and I went to mine quartz again, and with my level 30 enchant, I ended up only getting efficiency 4. Day 34, I'm still goaded with the Uno reverse card, and I also found a nether fortress, so I killed some blazes, got more nether wards, Uno reverse. Day 36, I killed Enderman to get some pearls. I did that for so long and only got 3 pearls. Day 37, when I entered the portal, I started dying because turns out some of the Endermen I was killing went through the portal. I got so low bro, this was scary. Even though I only had 3 pearls, I still decided to go look for the stronghold. I ransacked a village on the way, and another one, and a desert temple, and another village, and another desert temple, and on day 42, I was out of ender eyes, so on the first village I saw, I decided to do a bedrock speedrunning strat to find the stronghold below a village, and it actually worked. I found some pretty cool books in the libraries, and I found the end portal only on day 44. That's why I'm so bad at navigating the stronghold. I didn't have any ender eyes though, so another speedrunning strat, make a portal using the lava, and also light it up with the lava, and then I died in the nether. Just kidding, I'm on one hut. I went back to farming Enderman and this took way too long dude. Day 46, I finally had enough pearls. I almost died going through the nether portal again on day 47. So this is like the third time this happened. I also got prod 4 on my pants by the way. And day 49, it's finally time to kill the ender dragon. First entrance task, bridge over the void. The ender dragon immediately tried to go for a kiss. I started exploding the crystal and now the dragon is spitting on me. I tried to get the spit with bottles but I actually don't know how to do it on mobile so uh, yeah I didn't get any. There was one tower that I just couldn't shoot so I started building up and the dragon just hit my butt like okay. He did it a second time and I almost died but remember I am a pvp -er. Okay maybe I should stop talking and let you enjoy this epic fight now.
All right, voiceover pan is back. I'm going to the end to this now. On day 50, I actually found one with an end ship. First chest I looted had 5 diamonds and some iron stuff. Second chest had diamond tools but with the worst enchants possible like whoever needs pain of Arthropods 5. Third chest I got a prot 3 diamond helmet. Mine was about to bring so that's really nice. Fourth chest I got another prot 3 helmet. Fifth chest a really good iron pickaxe. Sixth chest a maxed out iron chest blade and a sharpness 4 iron sword. In the end ship I got two this a diamond pickaxe and also got the elytra and the dragon head. In the 10th chest there was a diamond sword with almost every single enchantment maxed out. All I'm gonna need to do is put another sharpness 4 on it and it's gonna be perfect. I then proceeded to go back to the main island using the elytra and collected the remaining XP I forgot to take and I tried to get the dragon egg until three endermen ganged on me. I got down to half a heart, I quickly put a block on top of my head and oh my god this is way too close for comfort man. I survived though, and so I tried to get the dragon egg again but this time it straight up disappeared. I looked around to like day 51 and I still couldn't find it. So I eventually went through the portal and went to the world spawn to see if it just went through the portal too but it wasn't there either. Guys if you have any idea on where I can find it please let me know in the comments because man this is sad. Day 52 since I got 69 levels from killing the dragon I decided to use them to upgrade my gear. I enchanted and disenchanted until day 56 where I did some villager trading and on day 57 I turned a new villager into a librarian like 100 times and I got the sharpness 5 trade. At the end of the day I combined most of my enchants. Day 58 I was completely out of XP so I went sailing to find some buried treasures. I actually don't remember why I got this mess but alright. First treasure didn't have anything interesting but the second one just led me to the treasure that I already dug up. How does this even happen? Day 59 I went back home using my reptile 3 trident. Using it is so satisfying and I made my boots using the XP I collected. Day 60 I ended up ditching the sharpness fire trend and got on breaking 3 instead. I did some deforestation again so I could train with the villagers on day 61. Also I wasn't lying when I said I had two of the exact same treasure maps. Day 62, it's time for some villager torturing. In night I was killing mobs to get XP and I forgot I killed this pillager and got bad omen. So on day 63 it was time to do a raid. The first 6 stages were pretty easy, but I can't say the same for stage 7. I got ganged up by 3 vindicators, a ravager and an evoker. I managed to kill the vindicators but the evoker had spawn vexes which are actually really hard to kill. I managed to kill the evoker but the ravager pressed me down to one heart. I quickly ran, I put a totem that I got in the previous stage and I died immediately after. Once I killed the ravager the rest of the raid went pretty smoothly and just like then I'm the hero of the village. On day 64 I upgraded my pickaxe with the XP I got, abused the cheap trains to get more XP and upgraded my pickaxe even more. On day 65 I tried the strategy of buying XP bottles from a cleric. I then upgraded my axe, got a max down shield and max down shears. On day 66 I realized this strategy was really just not worth it so I resorted back to killing mobs at night. On day 67 I started sharing wild shapes so I could get beds to find netherite and I also started a wall farm. Day 68 I made some fire resistance potions and once I got a decent amount of beds I went in the nether to go bed mining. On day 69 after using 7 beds I had 9 ancient debris which is enough to make 2 netherite ingots. Nice. So I upgraded my chest plate and my leggings. And you may have realized that I'm still on 1.19. That's because I recorded this months ago. So if I get 2000 likes on this video, I'll do 200 days on 1.20. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that video. I also made the sheep pen a bit bigger so they get more grass and shoot some wild sheep. Day 70, same thing. Shoot wild sheep make the pen bigger. Day 71 we're going back to bed mining and after using 14 beds I only had 3 debris so I only could upgrade my helmet. What a scam. Day 73 I tortured the villagers again and I broke a fletching table I don't remember why and the villager just picked it up. Well I guess I'm never getting that back. Day 74 this should be enough beds to get tons of netherite. 
Right? See what I did there? Netherite? Right? Anyways, day 75, Ben mining time. So until day 76, I and I ended up getting 11 debris, so I upgraded my boots. Day 77, I realized that the villagers got their trading stations messed up and couldn't restock, so I fixed that. Also, there are so many ships, and this is really satisfying. I then perfected my sick touch pickaxe, bought sharpness 4 from my villagers, and so I got my 100% maxed out sword, just using two levels and one nether end. Next morning, I realized there was two creepers and a skeleton outside my house, so I took this opportunity to get two music discs. So I crafted a jukebox and I listened to all the music discs I had. At the end of the day, I went bed mining again. Day 79. After using all my beds, I was going back home when I realized I had missed an ancient debris. It was a one vein at first, but after mining around, I found two more. This is why you always break blocks around debris. And so I ended up getting 22. So I turned my pickaxe and my axe into netherite. I even had four more netherite ingots. Day 80. I wanted to prepare to fight the wither, so I went in the nether and killed gas to get gas tears. Ooh, never jump scare. Also went to the fortress to kill wither skeletons, and the first one I killed actually dropped a head. Day 81. I was back home with the three skulls I needed and started brewing regeneration potions. The wither is no joke, dude. It gives the wither to effect for 40 seconds. And I also made night vision potions so I can see in the dark. Day 82. I mined down to wine again to 59, and I spawned the wither who proceeded to spawn in the wall. Immediately it attempted to escape, but you can't escape the pet on your west. Stage 2, the Wither Shion is activated and it spawned 3 Wither Skeletons. I actually switched my axe because it has smite 4 on it and it does more damage to the Wither than my Sharpness 5 sword. And holy, this dash attack is making my game lag. I managed to kill it though and the Wither 2 FN got me down to 2 hearts but thankfully I still had some regen potions. I then proceeded to take all the blocks that the Wither broke. They could come in handy for builds. Yes. I know, I still have the wither effect, it's really long. I also collected the diamonds that the wither exposed. I then went back home on day 83 and went back to shearing sheep as if I didn't just kill one of the strongest mobs in the game. I ended the day by maxing out my shovel and I started making a carrot farm. Day 84, I mined some obsidian to make a beacon. On day 85, I mined even more obsidian from this huge ruined portal to make a gold farm. And since I didn't have enough obsidian, I went in the nether to get leather and put it in water in the overworld to generate obsidian. Day 86, Six, I went to collect iron for the gold farm. Day 87, I made the villager trading hall bigger and got a fortune 3 book trade. And then I made a perfect fortune 3 pickaxe and fortune the diamonds ore I got from the weather side. Day 88, all I did is torture villagers. Day 89, I finally had enough materials so I went to this nearby island and started making my gold farm. I got this design from JC Plays, who you should definitely check out because he has Tons of awesome farms. Night 92 is the night I finally finished my gold farm. Also, these guys started attacking me while I was using it, so I got bent omen and completely forgot again and flew directly into the trading hall. Day 93, I did the raid with no issues. It goes to show how good my gear is. Day 94, I did some enchanting using the XP I got from the gold farm and I now have a maxed out netherite shovel. I also made 9 emerald blocks and put the beacon on the second floor and now my house shoots a beam into the sky. Day 95, I enchanted my fishing rod and my hoe which I turned into a netherite one on day 96. Day 97, I just afk out my gold farm. Day 98, I did some enchanting, maxed out my fishing rod and put respiration on my helmet. Day 99, I built like a little place to look at the sea behind my house and collected some carrots. And here we are on day 100 in which I fished while listening to music discs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's actually my first survival video since like four years ago. If you did enjoy, please like the video and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.